of that term but it is possible that it is one of the meanings that they would have understood for in the days of Isaiah when a king conquered another kingdom he would cut the robe off of the ruling king and he would attach it to his robe and the longer a king's robe was signified the more victories he had accomplished the more territory that he governed the longer it took for the train to follow in behind him was the greater significance of the glory and the power and the victory. And Isaiah said, when I saw the Lord high and lifted up, his train just kept on coming and kept on coming and kept on coming until it filled the temple. Because he's not just king over salvation. He's not just king over your soul going to heaven. He's not just victorious over the cross. He's victorious over sickness. He's victorious over broken hearts and minds and bodies and lives and marriages and families. He is king of all kings. He is Lord of all lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At the cross the work was finished. You were buried in the ground. Come on, sis. But the grave cannot contain you. For you wear the here from from the Caribbean Guyana Trinidad Jamaica praise the Lord y'all worship like this down there no so why are you containing yourself why are you holding back you scared you scared you you think you're gonna scare you think you're gonna scare this white boy is there anybody here from Central and South America? Si habla espanol. Hallelujah. Quien vive? A su nombre? You worship like this in Central and South America? No, I've been to those countries. So why are you containing yourself at Logos Christian Family Church in Mississauga? Do we have anybody here from Africa? Oh, 
podium. going to be like I said that's what heaven's going to be like thank you Jesus thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord y'all left the plants alone so I've been in a bunch of countries they start grabbing trees and potted plants and chairs and they're just Papua New Guinea and Kenya and they just start waving anything that can be waved you see babies, just somebody just lifting a baby. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't you love the Lord? Yeah. Amen. 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 You can be seated tonight. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Mmm. Hallelujah. I feel like I'm walking with a match through a warehouse of gunpowder. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Thank you so much for your giving. The Lord bless you and give back to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Not out of tax receipts, but out of heavenly receipts. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 25. My cousin Dalton is already sad that he's not here, but he's getting ready to speak at a men's conference at our church in the morning. And God is just using him at 22 years old, expanding and blessing his ministry. How many, how many, before you raise your hand, y'all just so eager, I feel like I could say, how many, I don't even know. <laughs> how, how many were touched in your body last night and you feel like healing has been made manifest in this last 24 hours? Anybody feel the touch of healing from last night till today? Hallelujah. Maybe, maybe seven, eight, nine, ten hands lifted. God bless you. We thank God for that. I heard y'all have testimonies sometimes, so you'll have time to give the testimonies in the future. But I just wanted to see it while I was here that somebody felt like the Lord touched them. Praise God. Praise God. I've got two messages tonight, so I hope you brought a snack because we might be here a while. 
My flight, my flight doesn't take off until 8 in the morning, so I got time for at least two messages. But I, I, I want to I see uh, by a show of hands, how many are born again? How many are right with God? How many, if the Lord comes back right now, you're ready to go? If the trumpet sounds, you're rapture ready. Anybody saved here tonight? The Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Now, if you were here and you were not yet serving the Lord Jesus Christ, you had not yet surrendered your life to him, we would not say to you, you've got to come back in a month or come back in three months or come back on some appointed day when God's ready for you that you have to wait for a certain time or season. We believe the Bible teaches today is the day of salvation. And that you can be born again as soon as you call on the name of the Lord. So if you are unable to lift your hand because you're not right with God, you can get saved and get, and get ready for heaven tonight. You're in the right place. There's no, there's no, we have something at Walmart in the United States. I don't know if y'all have it here. It's layaway. It's where you want to buy something. You can't afford to pay for it. So you put a little bit down and you keep coming back in and paying, paying, paying until you can get the whole thing and take it home. There's no layaway on salvation. You can get it all tonight because Jesus already paid for it. Amen. Now let me see a show of hands of those that have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the Bible evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. Lift that hand up high. Lift it up high. Lift it up high. Lift it up high. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is it real? Somebody shout, it's real. Amen. Not he, of course he, the baptizer, is real. But the baptism of the Holy Ghost is, is what I'm referring to. It's real. The power of God is real. If you could not or did not lift your hand because you've not yet experienced what the book of Acts it shows us is normal for the New Testament believer, what is, what is abundant in the New Testament in, throughout book after book, then, then let, me, let me say this to you. There is no layaway on the Holy Ghost. There is no waiting period. You don't, we, we're not going to say to you, well, you can ask, but you kind of come back in a month or three months or six months or a year. No, 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 friend. We believe that as soon as you call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. And if you call on the Lord to fill you with his spirit, you shall be filled. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm nobody special, but I have had the great privilege of seeing thousands of people, if not tens of thousands, filled all over the world, sometimes hundreds at a time in one split second as God has moved across places. And I, I, would, be, I would be remiss. I would feel like I have robbed you if I walk away from a meeting and say, well, we had good services and we prayed and we touched heaven, but we did not supply you with something better than a devotional to take home with you, something better than than somebody that will disciple you next week but the very author of the book will come alive inside of you and cause Jesus to be real in you listen I'm not asking did you fall out in the spirit did you shake did you have goosebumps there is a Bible experience of receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost and God is going to fill every desirous soul tonight if you believe it say amen Hallelujah. And those that want to refill, God's going to fill you too. Amen. Matthew chapter 25, the Bible said, Then shall the kingdom of heaven, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Matthew chapter 25. Ten virgins that took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom, and five of them were wise and five were foolish. And they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took all in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. And afterward came also other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this charged atmosphere of expectancy. 
Lord, I ask you to give boldness to those that are afraid of the sound of their own voice, that tonight they will find freedom to worship you out loud. And God, that you would get in that voice and they would find themselves praising in their known language and then the river of the Spirit coming and then praising in a heavenly language. Lord, get, give the atmosphere of faith that makes it easy to receive. Lord, I'm preaching your word. Faith will come by the hearing of this word and make us quick to respond and receive the fullness of what you died for us to have. Father, make this room your baptismal tank and baptize everyone in Holy Ghost and in fire. In Jesus' name, and God's people said amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Praise the Lord. I was reading this passage in my devotions some time back, and as I was reading, I, I, I felt the Lord begin to talk to me, and so I, I closed my Bible, and I sat there, and I was saying, Lord, what are you saying about, these, about these, this situation, this parable where there are a bridal company, five wise, five foolish, and, and I would never call anybody a fool because Jesus said that if you call a man thou fool, you're in danger of hellfire. So, so I wouldn't use that term. But if you call something foolish, it means it's something we ought to pay attention to. So I started figuring out what, what's the difference between the wise and the foolish. They were all virgins speaking something of purity in their life on some level. So that was not the area of foolishness. They all must have had on the wedding garment because in another parable they were cast out for not being dressed appropriately for the wedding. So that's not their area of foolishness. They've prepared the outside. They've lived in accordance with the way they should. And that as a type of a, the church looking for the coming of the Lord, that they, are, they all have right theology. This is Jesus speaking of what it will be like before he comes. And he says, my church will be like 10, the, the, the last days will be like it, like 10 virgins. And he says, some wise and some foolish. And so he's saying all of them are looking for the bridegroom, which is Jesus, which is soon to return. Which is Jesus, which is soon to return. And so they all had right doctrine and right theology. So the area of foolishness was not how they were dressed, was not how they were living, was not their theology or doctrine. What then is the discrepancy between the wise and the foolish? And the Holy Spirit dealt with me and he showed me it was the content of the vessel of their lamp. And as soon as he showed me that, I felt the Holy Spirit ask me, Robert, what's in your lamp? What's in your lamp? So you're created to burn, and you're going to burn for something. You're going to burn for the maple leaves, or you're going to burn for the blue jays. You're going to burn for a sale over at Marshall's, or you're going to burn for your grandbabies. You're going to burn for for something in this world. You're going to burn for politics. You're going to burn for your next vacation to some tropical getaway. Something makes you passionate. Something. You were created to burn for something. And if you say, no, I'm just not a very passionate person. I don't really have a lot of hobbies or interests. Just wait till somebody cuts you off in traffic and then we find what you burn for. You burn for yourself. And when you're inconvenienced, you who are king of your realm, how dare somebody cut me off? Now we found out what you burn for. We are meant to burn for something, but we all burn out because none of those things are given the fuel to last or to satisfy a life. What's in your lamp? I don't know about you. You may be so spiritual and sanctified that he never interrupts your prayer time and devotions. But right there in the middle of my prayer time and Bible reading, the enemy just popped that, that commercial in my mind. What's in your wallet? It was, what is it? Capital One? Capital One. See, y'all may not be quote scripture, but you can quote some commercials. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Y'all quote scripture too in 15 different languages. So Capital One, they have sold their brand of plastic. Anybody remember what it was like before credit cards? I mean, now, now people barely even carry cash. But they, they say, if you have our brand of credit card, then we will keep you safe from identity theft. What a crazy thing is that? Identity theft. We don't live in a day where people have to meet you to rob you. They don't have to assault you to rob you. They don't have to take your purse, 
what grandma calls her pocketbook. They don't have to take your wallet. What grandpa calls his billfold. I don't know what y'all, how y'all talk up here in the South. We got all kind of crazy words. Hey Amen. They don't have to break in your house. They don't have to find your, they don't have to break into your bank's vault. They don't have to live on your continent. If they gain access to pertinent information concerning your identity, they can wipe out your wealth. Even if you don't have wealth, they can wipe out your credit and the ability to purchase things in the future. They can wipe out an inheritance all by gaining access to your identity. And while my mind was drifting off on a rabbit trail about Capital One and credit cards and, and, and all of that, all of a sudden I, I, I refocused. I said, Lord, bring me back over here to your word. You're asking me what's in my lamp. And then I began to realize the similitude, the likeness of what the Lord was saying because he's, he's teaching us here that it is the content of your vessel that determines the security of your identity in him. See, Capital One doesn't care where you got your purse. I was raised by my mama, so I know all the brand. It don't matter if you got a Louis Vuitton purse or a Coach purse or a Vera Bradley purse. It don't matter if you got a Walmart purse. It don't matter if you sewed it together purse. It doesn't matter if your wallet is a, is a, is a leather wallet or an ostrich skin wallet or a duct tape wallet. It doesn't matter as long they say it's not the vessel that counts. It's the content of the vessel. If their brand of plastic is in your, is in your possession, then they say we will save you from the threats trying to steal your identity so it is in this realm to, listen to me friend in 2019 it does not matter how you label yourself spiritually it does not matter what Pentecostal label you put over your vessel for we live in a day where a lot of people use the terms the labels and yet they are empty on the inside of the content of the oil of God's spirit it's not enough to say I go to a spirit-filled church. I go to a church with Pentecostal preacher, with Pentecostal doctrine. I go to this denomination or that denomination. I believe in this or I believe in that. Friend, you can label it however you want it, but if in every other way of the life you grieve the spirit, you deny the spirit, you refuse to walk in the spirit, you don't heed the bidding of the spirit, what does it matter what you've labeled yourself? There's nothing on the inside. But let somebody get filled with the Holy Ghost in an Anglican church. Let them get filled with the Holy Ghost in a Baptist church. Let them get filled with the Holy Ghost on the street with no church. Let them get filled with the Holy Ghost uh, as a Pentecostal Presbyterian church I preached at in Pakistan. Anywhere in the world where God's pouring out His Spirit, let their life be fit with the oil of God's Spirit. And now, it doesn't matter what they've labeled it, you cannot deny the flame that is burning in their life. I burn for this, friend. I burn for this. I know I've been calling y'all out night after night, but I'm so proud of you young people sitting on the front row. Hey, man, don't look mad at me. Smile, kind of, sort of. It's a fake smile. That's all right. You try and, hey, amen. Would you give these young people a hand for sitting so close and being up around the altar last night? Praise God. Hey, amen. Second row. Appreciate it, Brother Joey. It burdens me that the enemy does not mind that our young people will use the label of Christian or spirit-filled or Pentecostal, but he's only threatened if they ever get filled with the power. And so he's come to rob us. He's come to rob us of the power that we possess. Did you hear me? I said the enemy has come to rob us of the identity, not the label, but the content of our vessel. And if it's not enough that he would just try to rob us of our identity by stealing the power that fills us, he's now trying to destroy our inheritance. See, wherever there is Pentecost, there is some connection with a heritage of those who have been carrying oil in their vessels. Amen. Those that are just getting a tongue without getting a baptism in the spirit don't recognize that there's more power than repeating syllables over and over but there is a fullness because not been connected to the heritage and to the legacy sister Bruna of those that have walked with God hallelujah they paid a price when Pentecost came to Italy they paid a price when Pentecost
Pentecost came to the Ukraine. They paid a price when Pentecost came to every corner of this world because the established church sent out law enforcement and said, don't let that tent revival come over here. Don't let them act like them this over here. Those people are crazy. Those people are full of the devil. They were, they were beaten. They had the rotten, rotten, rotten uh, vegetables thrown at them. They were persecuted. Some of our pastors have been and throughout the world still are being imprisoned for preaching this message. You don't understand the value of it if you don't understand the inheritance. And the enemy is out to steal the inheritance. He's out to steal the wealth of power God's given us in the Holy Ghost. And more than that, he's out to steal the purchasing power of the future. If, the, if there's someone steals your credit, they wipe out your ability to make an investment in the future. It doesn't matter how much we run the aisles and talk in tongues if these babies don't get this Holy Ghost. The enemy's trying to rob them. Just go to a conference. Just play games in the youth group. There's more than that. Oh, this is going to be a long night if y'all don't help me preach. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel like I got the word of the Lord, but is God talking to you tonight? Would you help me? I said, would you help me preach? We're, 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 I'm praying, I've been praying downstairs. I'm praying for you now that God would help everybody become comfortable with the sound of their own voice. So let's just warm it up right now. Try it out. Amen. Yeah. Praise, the Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Out loud. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, that wasn't too hard, was it? Wonderful. Praise the Lord. See, if you'll help me preach and start throwing out a courtesy, amen, even when it's not that good, it'll start pulling a better preach out of me. All right? That's the way this works. The enemy is trying to steal the future deposit of the power of God in another generation. And it's not, it wouldn't be enough for us to write the doctrines on the walls. It wouldn't be enough for us to wave a banner uh, uh, over, over the building. It only changes when the content of our vessel is filled with the oil of his spirit. When the flame is undeniable, then the identity is secure that you are burning for the things of God. Amen. 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 Five wise and five foolish. What's going on here? Jesus is speaking to people in that, in that day that understand clearly the, the wedding procedures, the wedding customs. See, in that day when a young man met a young woman and with the agreement of parents and maybe rabbis and all that needed to take place agreed that they were to be wed, before the wedding they would have something called a betrothal. Betrothal was very important. After you were betrothed, you could actually begin to call one another husband and wife. Remember, the Bible says Mary, who was espoused to her husband, Joseph. They were not yet wed, and yet they had been betrothed. Betrothal was as binding as marriage in that you could not break it without a divorce, and yet, and yet... You could not live together as married couple until the ceremony. The reason this was so important is because he had a job to do from the time he was betrothed until the time of the wedding. The job was he had to go build a house because they believed that a man was not fit to be a husband if he did not provide a home for him and his bride. Now, he couldn't build it at her house because he had to maintain the inheritance of his father's land. So he had to build a house at his father's house. Some of you have been in countries where you've seen the rebar sticking out of the roof of a cement building. It's one generation waiting for the next generation to move upstairs and add the cinder blocks on top. So maybe it was like that, that he was going to build an abiding place on top of his father's house or adjacent to or close by his father's house. But whatever it was, he had to build a place close to where his father lived that's where he was inheriting land and while he's building he doesn't have time to run back and forth and visit her every day if they live in villages far away from each other I know it's hard to believe that there was no such thing as text messaging there was no such thing as Twitter or Instagram how did they even start liking each other without DMs I don't know 
They, 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 had, they there was no Facebook. There was, there was no, there was none of that. No emails. They may have had homing pigeons, but I doubt they used them very often. So, so he's, she's not going to hear from him the entire time he's building a house. So there would be a ceremony of betrothal where he would go to her family's house and he would offer her a covenant glass of wine. And he would make this pledge and vow. Every young man in that day planning to marry a young lady would say these words. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. How do you know those words? You've heard those words? Who said those words? Jesus said those words. Who did he say them to? He said them to me. Hey, glory to God. Amen. And all she had to do to partake of that vow was drink from the cup. And after drinking from that cup, looking in the eyes of the one who loved her, who wanted to spend the rest of his life with her, she was saying, I will not flirt. I will not date. I will not follow any other pursuer. I will be yours and yours alone. And so then he goes back to his father's house. And if it's a long journey, she does not hear from him until the house is finished. Might be discouraging. Where is the one whom my soul loves? Has he forgotten of me? Oh, that I could hear his voice. Why haven't I heard from him? When is he coming? Well, if you're, if you're in a hurry, you might just put up a tent. But if you're really trying to make something nice, it's going to take a while. You might have friends in town that say, oh, forget him. It's going to take him so long. Just Let's just go out and have a good time tonight. You can dance with a couple guys. It's no big deal. You can flirt a little bit with some other men in town. It's not, it's not a problem. He's, he's not finished yet. Or they might have tried to convince her he's already found somebody else. You don't even know if he's already moved in. How do you know he's still looking and waiting for you? I can imagine that as her heart might grow somewhat doubtful in despair, longing and waiting, Temptation knocking at the door. Another boy, another suitor, come out and be with me. Just spend some time with me. Maybe, just maybe, maybe mama said, said set the table for dinner. And when you put out the glasses, tonight pour some wine in the glasses. Have you ever tasted something that took your mind back? I don't know what country you came from, and I don't know what kind of food you grew up on, but I can tell you right now, if I ever get sausage, gravy, and biscuits... Does that even compute? Do you even know what I'm talking about? I, I, I'm talking about the gravy still has some grease in it from the sausage because everything grandma made had grease in it. And, and, and she made it in an iron skillet. And if I ever just shut my, my eyes and put that mm, manna in my mouth, it's like my feet are right back under grandma's table. Y'all drink hot tea up here, but for where I come from, we drink sweet iced tea. And the sweeter it gets, the more I remember grandma's house. Our tea's so sweet, you can pour it over your pancakes. Amen. There's something about flavor that brings you back to a memory. I, I can imagine maybe a young lady that's been missing the one who betrothed himself to her that says, where is he at? Is he coming? Until finally she lifts a glass back to her lips. And when that, when that flavor touches her tongue instantly her mind goes back to his eyes that gaze into hers instantly she remembers the vow that he made to her instantly she remembers the way her heart went pitter patter and she said oh mama come on mama tell, tell all them boys at the door go somewhere else tell all my friends I can't leave the house tonight he might be coming to get me tonight my house might be ready tonight I can't be distracted you sound like you're way out there. Am I? Have you read 1 Corinthians chapter 11? Because when Paul speaks of communion, he says, as oft as ye drink this cup and eat of this bread, you do show forth the Lord's resurrection until he comes again. Hallelujah. I don't know. I don't know.
know how y'all take communion around here, but I don't take communion like a Catholic. I don't take it like it's a dead ceremonial somber event. I take that cup, close my eyes, and say thank you for forgiveness, but this is more than a reminder of my past. This is a flavor reminding me of the covenant you made that you're preparing a place for me. Hallelujah. I don't know. Maybe you got a text message from Jesus today. Maybe he posted on your Facebook wall. Maybe maybe you got an email from him. I didn't. I've not heard from him from 2,000 years. And the longer it takes for us to hear from him, the better that mansion's going to be. He made this world in six literal 24-hour days. The majesty and splendor of the Great Barrier Reef. Every beautiful butterfly, every constellation and galaxy came forth out of his utterance in six. He's been gone 2,000 years. Oh, heaven's going to be wonderful. Listen, 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 listen. I can't afford to flirt with the world. I can't afford to flirt with the devil. I can't afford to get distracted. <laughs> Glory! He might be putting the last gold brick in my driveway. And as soon as it's finished, he's going to come and get his bride. And those who believe this, they purify themselves even as he is pure. For they love his appearing. Are you looking for his coming? Are you ready for his coming? Are you excited about his coming? Oh, hallelujah. When he was finished, when he was finished, he would make the journey to her house. People worked during the day. Weddings took place at night. So when everyone was now off work and available and out of the fields and out of their shops, he would begin a parade, a procession from her father's house to his father's house where the wedding banquet was prepared. As it grew dark, if the journey was long, it may be laid into the night by the time they arrive at his father's house. And this is where we come to Matthew chapter 25, where these virgins have a job to do. They're not standing on the platform with bouquets of flowers just to look good. They've got a job to do. They've got lamps. I know y'all living in this area. Y'all know what I mean when I say y'all. I just keep saying that tonight. I don't know what's happening to me. You, you, you do know what, what it's like to pass by that Toronto airport at night and see all those runway lights, don't you? Mm, that was the job of this bridal company. See, the Bible said it was midnight by the time they arrived. And there would have been people hearing the festivities, people hearing the parade, people hearing the celebration saying, what's that noise? What are those people out in the streets shouting about? What are they out there singing and dancing about? What is dark outside? What's all that noise about? Hallelujah. And then they say, oh, that must be the wedding they've been talking about. That must be, it mean it's time. It must mean that their mansion is finished. It must mean it's time for the ceremony to begin. Well, we wanted to go to that wedding, didn't we? We got an invitation, didn't we? Yeah, but it's dark. I don't remember how to get to his father's house. And this is the job of those virgins. They trim the wick. That means they cut off the place that used to burn. Because it's not enough to have ashes of where you got filled with the Holy Ghost at Brayside or Coburg camp meeting or back in the old country 35 years ago. You got to trim off the place that used to have ashes and make room for fresh fire. They trim their wick. Before that, the Bible said that they were all asleep, the wise and the foolish. But someone let out a cry. I'm losing my voice, but I feel like hollering anyways. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him and they arose I don't like waking people up I had to wake up Dalton real early this morning for his flight it's not fun to wake people up if you love people you want to let them sleep just let them go on and have a nap just keep on being comfortable Oh, I'd get along a lot better with churches if I didn't have a Holy Ghost trumpet built inside of me that says, don't let them stay comfortable. I'm coming back for them and they need to wake up. You don't make friends by going into their bedrooms right in the middle of the dark, throwing open the shades, letting the sunlight shine and turning on loud music and say, get up. That's not the way you make friends. Amen. And some people don't like the way I preach. You're too loud. You scream too much. Friend, I'm not here to be everybody's friend. I'm not running for political office. But I I have come to announce to the church of God, to announce to God's children, if you're asleep, 
it's time to wake up. See, the wise and the foolish, everybody was asleep. Amen. If you've been asleep, let me remind you, it may be late, it may be dark, it may be midnight in your life, but get your mind off bankruptcy. Get your mind off of your business dealings. Get your mind off of every drama and broken relationship and get your mind on the eastern sky. Hallelujah. Wake up. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Behold, Jesus is coming. Behold, Jesus is coming. Oh, hallelujah. They rose. They trimmed their lamps. They lit those lamps and they held them up on both sides of the street leading to the door of the Father's house. And this is the purpose of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Oil in that vessel shined a light out in the dark so that all those out in a dark, dying world that said, we want to get in party, we want to get in on the celebration, we want to be in, invited and join what God is doing at the Father's house, but we don't know the way. This is the purpose of the last day church. Be filled with the oil of God's spirit. Turn up the flame. Stand in front of the door to the Father's house and say, this is the way. Walk ye therein. And those out in a dark world, you don't have to have a degree in theology. You don't have to be raised in Sunday school. You don't have to quote all the verses. Just get oil in your lamp and people say, there's something different about you it's not doctrine it's not labels there's something burning inside of you it's different than my passion there's something of unction there's something of fire what is it and you can say this is the way let me show you this is the way oh, amen it is the power of the holy ghost i see people post things online that want to have arguments about speaking in tongues and, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost and Pentecostal understanding and you don't have to have it and I don't get in arguments with him because the proof is not only in scripture he said in Acts 1 and 8 you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth can I tell you that we are now living in the greatest outpouring of the oil of God's spirit so that the witness of this spirit and power the power of the spirit is to shine a light in the last days to the way to the father's house do you know that a hundred years ago there was almost no tongue talkers in the world they said that's not for us that's for the apostles you know how many there are now over 600 million there's over 600 million and it's not just Pentecostals it's Anglicans. It's Presbyterians. There's 19 million Pentecostal Lutherans in Ethiopia. Amen. God is pouring out a spirit on all flesh. All you got to do is put down your umbrella and you'll get wet too. Amen. He's doing it all over the world. The proof that it is what he says it was is that it is power to be a witness and the church is exploding everywhere. Pentecost is allowed to have freedom. The light in the dark showing the way to the Father's house is working and they're coming. But more than just shining a light on the door, Jesus said, I am the door. And anybody that comes any other way is a thief and a robber. <sighs> Our weddings, they're surrounded around the bride. She's the center of attention. She's the beautiful one we've come to see. But Hebrew weddings are surrounded around the groom. He's the one that knows the way to the father's house. He's the one that says, even in the dark, I can lead you. And while they're standing there holding their lamps, the first one to take center stage, the first one to appear out of the blackness of night is the groom. <laughs> Isn't that what he said in Revelation? He said, I am he who walks in the midst of of the lamb stands. What is this? It's Jesus walking in the presence of those full of the Holy Ghost with oil in their lamp in order to shine on him. 
I believe in all the manifestations of the Holy Ghost. I want to see a glory cloud fill the house. I want to see, I want to feel liquid fire fall down. I want somebody to see a vision of fire dancing on the roof. I want people to fall out. I want people to do backflips in the aisle. I want people that are, that are, that are, that are paralyzed to be healed and start running. I want to see all the manifestations of his glory. But listen to me, friend. That is not the primary purpose of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said when he comes, he will not speak of himself. He will testify of me. When you just say it's all about the spirit, the spirit, the spirit, he gets shy and he leaves the building. But when you start lifting up Jesus, 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 he says, I supply fuel in your lamp for that job. He wants to walk in the midst of the lamp stands. So the purpose of the Holy Ghost is that we shine a light on Jesus. That's what we're made for. I know the Bible says clap your hands, but you ain't going to get filled with the Holy Ghost clapping your hands. You got to open your mouth. Amen. So get used to using your voice a little bit. Hallelujah. <sighs> Praise the Lord. I just get so excited about that image. <laughs> that I, who was wretched, he saved a wretch like me. Come on, he didn't improve my life. He allowed me to kill the old man and be raised in new life. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. And not only did he save me to be ready for heaven, he said, now give me your vessel and I will fill you with myself that you might burn so that I can walk in your midst and people can see me. That's the purpose of the Holy Ghost. You come to this altar and say, I want to talk in tongues. I want to speak in tongues. I want a tongue. You may not get anything, but you come to this altar and say, I want power to glorify Jesus. I want fuel to give him glory. I want to be a light that shines upon him. I promise you, he's going to give you the power to do that. <laughs> Hallelujah. This baptism in the Holy Ghost. Notice it said they all began with oil, but half of them neglected the supply. And if you got filled so you can mark it off on your doctrinal chart and say, I was filled at youth camp, I was filled, and now I'm done, I've done it, then you don't understand the importance of not neglecting the gift of God that is within you. Paul said to Timothy, stir it up, fan it into flame, get a fresh baptism. Amen. I'm not here to make any discrepancy or any, any derogatory remark about Canada, but I am going to testify about my first experience in a Canadian restaurant. I was preaching somewhere in the GTA and I went out to Apache Burger. <laughs> and they gave me a cup that looked like a thimble. Little tiny little communion cup kind of thing. It was a little bit bigger than that, but not much. And I got a soda. And when I got done drinking it, I went back up. I said, I'd like to have some Coke, please. And they said, you want to buy another one? I said, no. I already bought it. I want you to put more in the cup you already gave me. They said, we don't do that. <laughs> I won't tell you all the things I thought about telling them. <laughs> I said, I'm from America. We believe in free refills where I come from. I, 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 I don't know. I don't understand this system. You're going to make me pay again? And they said, well, we'll let you have one because they're Canadians and they're nice. <laughs> Friend, let me tell you something. We serve a God that believes free refills. It's 832. Do you know people that are getting dressed to go to the club? Some of them haven't even woke up from their afternoon nap yet. They're still just getting ready to get up and finally stir and start getting ready to go out. And by the time we're in the altar, they may be getting their first drink. You think they're going to stop there? No, they're thankful for something called Uber so they can drink all that they want to and have a designated driver on the way home. Why is it then that God's people come to an altar, speak in tongues for five seconds, and say I got it and go home satisfied oh friend there's more to God than tongues that's the shallow end of the pool that's the getting in spot but if you say Lord I thank you for that trickle I thank you for that little blessing but Holy Ghost bartender I need a refill serve me up another one I'm telling you you'll know realms of glory until you need a designated driver to get home 
used to take my great grandma. They used to take her and put her in the back seat of the car with four of her grandkids. And they said the power of God was still on her from the altar service on Sunday nights. And she'd be back there just enjoying the Holy Ghost, just to talking in tongues. And after a while, she'd have herself a little Pentecostal fit, and she'd get to jerking. And she, they said all four of them grandkids would be way up against the other door of the back seat, watching great Granny Terry just have herself a time in the Holy Ghost. That will change your experience with God. Brother Robert, we just believe that if we quote the Apostles' Creed, that we have enough to, to, to be everything God wants us to be. He died for more than you to know doctrine. The letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, I could preach on this Holy Ghost all night. I was saved when I was seven. Just a few months before my parents divorced, Jesus walked in right before my father. Not, not, out, of, not out of malice. Not, he loved us. Amen. But he just wasn't there when I needed him at some crucial times. But can I tell you, when I was 11 years old, I was in an altar. I was praying for a young man in the youth group named Alan. I loved being an altar worker as a boy because I knew when I couldn't feel God for myself, I could pray for somebody else and the Lord would anoint me to help their need that's what ministry is allowing the resources of heaven to be provided to the needs of earth and so I got used to going down to the altar and praying for people I'd cry oh God help them but I was praying for Alan I didn't know what else to say I said God he's got needs I don't know what to say as I'm praying I start getting stammering lips oh, what's going on now I'm crying my lips are trembling before long the Holy Ghost starts praying through me I I knew exactly what it was. I said, thank God, fill me with the Holy Ghost so that I could save somebody else. But I was in that church because I was visiting my dad every other weekend. The rest of the week I lived with my mom in Orlando. No church, no pastor, no youth group. My mom and stepdad didn't serve the Lord. My sister wasn't walking with the Lord. I went to a massive middle school and high school, a completely different world than the small town I was raised in up to that far in my life. Can I tell you, this Holy Ghost made all the difference for me. <laughs> Physics will tell you that if the pressure on the outside of a container increases, that can, that submarine, whatever container, it will implode and be crushed unless the pressure on the inside pushing out is greater than the pressure on the outside pushing in. I might have been an 11 year old boy, but I was walking through the halls of that middle school and later on high school and I never smoked what they smoked and I never drank what they drank and I never felt led to go to their parties and I never felt led to sleep with who they were wanting to sleep with. Why? Not because I was anything in myself. I didn't have the youth group. I didn't have the friends. I didn't have the youth pastor. I didn't even have a father for such of that time. But I had the lion of the tribe of Judah on the inside pushing out. He was pushing out. push will make you like Jesus that push will make you holy that push will say I don't need drugs it'll tell the drug dealer I don't need what you've got you need what I've got I've already been so high on the most high you can't go higher than where I've been brother Robert we need to serve the Lord with our mind I know we do but hear me we live in a generation oppressed by depression oppression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, loneliness, and you want people to come, repeat a prayer, and never feel nothing on the inside, you can feel depression. You can feel anxiety. You can feel panic attacks. You can feel fear. You can feel loneliness. Praise God, you can feel the Holy Ghost. That's a good moment right there for you to practice using your voice. Use your voice. Don't be afraid of the sound of your voice. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. You can get filled right now. You can get filled right now. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Josh, help me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, I've got 15 more sermons I could preach on the Holy Ghost, and it's a lot of good material, but I'm going to stop preaching. I'm going to teach something real quick so you have some understanding, and then we're going to pray. Listen, there's five times in the book of Acts people received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There's Acts chapter 2. There was 120 in the upper room. 120 were filled. 120 spoke in tongues. It didn't say five of them fell out in the spirit and three of them had goosebumps and a couple people had the laughter and joy and somebody else wrote a song and somebody else painted a picture. No, no, no. It said 120 were there and 120 spoke in tongues. The next instance is in Samaria when Philip goes down and revival breaks out. And then Peter and John goes, and he noticed they've been born again and baptized in water, but as of yet, the Holy Spirit has not been poured out on any of them. That makes it very clear to us that salvation is a separate experience from the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And they said that whomever they laid hands on received the Holy Ghost in such a demonstrative way that Simon the sorcerer said, I will pay you that that whoever I lay hands on might have the same experience. Why would he say that if there was no out? outer expression so it doesn't say explicitly that they spoke in tongues but there was definitely an outer expression the next experience is in Acts chapter 9 when Paul is saved and Ananias goes and lays hands on him he receives his sight and is filled with the Holy Ghost and in Acts uh, in 1 Corinthians 14 he says I speak in tongues much more than you all he said I pray in the spirit I pray in the understanding I sing in the spirit I sing in the understanding he tells us in that same chapter I believe verse 3 he says when you speak in tongues it doesn't always need to be interpreted for when you speak in an unknown tongue you speak not unto men but unto God how be it in the spirit you speak mysteries why don't you listen to somebody who's never been filled with the Holy Ghost tell you what tongues is about versus somebody like Paul who has been filled that says let me tell you what it's about Then Acts chapter 10, one of the most important for our understanding is Peter went to the house of Cornelius in Caesarea Philippi, a Gentile city where Jews were not allowed to be in the city after dark and the gate closed. Jews didn't even want to go in the city, but he was invited by the Lord. Angels having come to a centurion named Cornelius and he went and he began to preach and as he preached, They of the house of Cornelius believed and began to speak in tongues. And they said, what hinders this water that they might be baptized? Now he got in trouble for preaching to non-Jews. He had to go back to Jerusalem and James, the brother of Jesus, the head of the church, said, why are you preaching to those Gentiles? Do you know we weren't even allowed to be Christians? We weren't allowed to join the church until Acts 10. You know what he told James? He said, they got what we got. What was that? The gift of the Holy Ghost. Well, how did they get it? They got it the way we got it. Acts 10 says, For we heard them speak with tongues, even as we did. Do you know if it wasn't for speaking in tongues, us Gentiles would have never been allowed to join the church. I'm not telling you you've got to speak in tongues to be a member of the church. I am telling you that it is a primary evidence of the power of God showing up in your life. The next instance is in Acts 19. Paul meets 12 men in Ephesus. He asks them not how the gladiators are doing at the Colosseum, not how politics is going for them, not if their guy they voted for was in. He said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, we didn't know there was such a thing. And so he prayed for them. He laid hands on them. Listen, listen, listen. The spirit came and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. I'm nobody, but I do believe that word. And I can tell you every country of this world I've been to. I preach the word. I lay hands. The spirit comes. Listen. It matters not to me what sin you committed five minutes before you walked into this building. The blood will make you as clean as Jesus Christ. We will lay hands on you 
And it is an impossibility that the Spirit is not going to come on you. He's going to come. How do you know, Brother Robert? Because you need more than a best-selling book by John Bevere or Joyce Meyer to be a good Christian. You need the power of God living inside of you get you out of bed in the morning. Kick the devil in the teeth. Get the depression and anxiety out of the way. Give you faith that your children are going to walk in God's will. Hallelujah. God's more ready for you to be filled than you are to be filled. Well, what if I'm not saved? Get saved and five seconds later, get filled. My grandmother went to the altar to get saved as a teenager. When her knees touched the ground to repent of her sin, as soon as her knees touched the floor, she started speaking in tongues. Because when the blood is there, heaven is ready to pour out his spirit. Well, I wasn't raised this way. Neither was anyone in the upper room. Neither was anyone in Samaria in Acts 8. Neither was Paul in Acts 9. Neither were the Gentiles in Acts 10. And neither were the Ephesians in Acts 19. Well, I still don't understand it all. Neither did they. They didn't pass out a tutorial, a formula, A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, all the reasons. They said, this is the promise of the Father for you. They laid hands on him. The Spirit came. They spoke. And that's what's going to happen here tonight. You can't get away from it. Every book of this New Testament was written by a tongue-talking, Pentecost, Spirit-filled preacher of the gospel. And everything they said about spirit is in the context of being filled with the spirit the first book after the book of acts is the book of romans my favorite chapter in the bible romans 8 as many as are led by the spirit of god they are the sons of god how can you be led by the spirit you've not yet been filled with the spirit first corinthians is the next book after that from chapter 6 he said no you're not your body's a temple of the holy ghost how can you be a temple of the holy ghost you've not yet been filled with the holy ghost the next book after that ephesians be not drunk with wine wherein is excess chapter Chapter 5 verse 18 but be filled with the spirit the next book Galatians chapter 5 do, do, walk not after the flesh but walk in spirit how can you walk in the spirit you've not been filled with the spirit Jude said praying in the spirit building yourself up in the most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost what if I don't get filled the devil is a liar I'm not nervous for you. I'm more excited than a five-year-old on Christmas Eve waiting for Santa to come down the chimney because God's better than Santa Claus. And I hear, mm, I see God is ready to fill. Luke chapter 11 and verse 9. Can you put it up for me? Luke chapter 11 and verse 9. <clears throat> Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Verse 10, for everyone that asketh, receiveth. How many? Just a few? Just the people that are real spiritual? Everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh findeth, and the him that knocketh it shall be. How do you know he's talking about asking for the Holy Ghost? Well, just tune in. We're about to find out. Verse 11. And if a son shall ask bread of any of you that ha is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him for him a serpent? Next verse. Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Stop right there. The rhetorical answer, look this way, please. The rhetorical answer is, of course not. What kind of abusive father feeds rocks to their children? The next verse, verse 13. If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them who ask him? You know what that means? It means that a child can come up here having never learned anything about this and say, God, I want everything you have for me. And they couldn't mess it up if they tried. I showed Pastor a few videos at the table this week. 11 year old girl battling with anxiety I laid hands on her she prayed through God filled her with the Holy Ghost she doesn't need another pill she needs a power of God flowing on the inside of her 
a four-year-old girl in Alabama, a preacher's daughter, filled with the Holy Ghost. I got a video of her at five years old of a youth conference. She's on the platform, sitting right behind where her daddy stands as the preacher of the, of the, of the service, speaking in tongues, crying. Chillicothe, Missouri, last year, the adults were ready to go home, sitting down, but the kids were in the altar, getting filled one after the other. Listen, I don't have puppets. I don't do face paint or fold animal balloons. I spit, I sweat, I scream, and yet children get hungry for this they come they pray God fills them if they can't mess it up if they're hungry and God fills them and they don't need a tablet they don't need a phone they're not saying I want to go home and eat a hot dog they're lost in the presence of God for 45 minutes to an hour how many know it's real it's real he said if you ask you will receive how much more will you receive the Holy Spirit to those who ask him you know what that means you couldn't get a fake if you tried how many of you when you first got filled with the Holy Ghost the first time you spoke in tongues the devil said you made that up lift your hand lift it up high lift it up high come on how many told you the devil said you made that up that's fake I can't count that quick but probably about 50 hands lifted right now you know why because the devil's a liar and he doesn't want you to go home with anything so he'll try to tell you when you get the real thing that you got the wrong thing. And when the devil tells you you got the wrong thing, since he's a liar and the only thing he knows how to do is tell lies, that's a confirmation you got the real thing. You're going to come. We're going to ask God to wash us in the blood. After we do that, we're going to worship him out loud. Using your vocal cords, your mouth, your lungs, your breath, your tongue. Pray in whatever language you know best. And then we're going to ask him to fill us with his spirit. If you hesitate, you might be here till 4 o'clock in the morning trying to overcome your own mind that's overthinking it. But if you ask one time in faith, we're going to lay hands on you. I promise you not 20 seconds, not 2 minutes. At that moment, he's going to come on you. You give up on French, sister. You give up on whatever Indian language you know. You give up on Espanol. You give up on French. You give up on English. The next thing out of your mouth, you speak what God gives you. It might be in your head. It might come up out of your belly. But I promise you, the devil say you heard somebody else say that. You're making that up. That's gibberish. That's baby talk. The devil's a liar. Just go ahead and say it loud enough so the devil can get intimidated. You can't whisper it. Use your voice and let that river begin to flow. Every river starts with one drop. But if you let it continue to flow, it'll turn into an Amazon. Stand with me to your feet all over the house. I may have told you last time I was here, I'm not sure, but one of my mentors, Brother B.H. Clendenin, he passed away about 10 years ago. 87 years old, mighty man of God, even at 87, was crisscrossing the globe preaching the gospel. He said there was a time in his ministry where he was preaching at a tent revival in Louisiana. Tune in right here with me. He said, I was laying hands on the sick, so many of them in that prayer line. He said, I was just praying, praying, praying. He said, the next man in line had patches on his eyes. And before I could think about what I was saying, out of my mouth said, you'll see in the morning. He said, oh Lord, what did I just say to that man? I don't know what's wrong with him. What if he doesn't? He said, the devil beat me up all the way home that night. What if he doesn't? What if he doesn't? What if he doesn't? He said that I thought they're going to shut down my ministry. They're going to publicize. I'm a charlatan. I'm a fake. He said, but right as I put my head on my pillow, the Holy Ghost said, what if he does? See, this Holy Ghost will do more than talk in tongues through you. He'll talk in your language through you. He'll give you boldness to testify of the power of God, to speak up at the dinner table, at Thanksgiving, at Christmas, on the job, in the cubicle. He said, I went back that next service. I'm looking out from that canvas tent, waiting for that man to pull up. He said, he pulls up, <clears throat> and it's not his wife. It's him driving the car. He said, when I saw that man come in the service, I didn't wait for the songs to start. I didn't wait for anything. I said, sir, come up here and tell these people what God did. He said, that man came up and said, Brother Clendenin, you don't know me from Adam. We've never met. He said, but I work in the oil field. I'm the engineer that keeps the viscosity of the drill right. And it was my job to pour acid in the drill. It exploded in my face. He said, it so damaged all of my eyes that the, the doctors removed with a scalpel all 
all of my eye tissue. He said, I came last night with two empty holes in my head and I woke up this morning with two brand new brown eyes. Are you telling me if I get filled with the Holy Ghost, I'm going to be able to do that? Friend, more than that, you're going to speak into the darkness of men's souls and say you can see again and you can love again and you can have joy again. You can be healed and be forgiven. That brother Clendenin, had he not told me this testimony, I would have believed it was a lot harder to get the Holy Ghost. But he said this is the way he received. He got home from World War II fighting in the South Pacific. He became an alcoholic. He said, I was a horrible husband and a horrible father. He said, but I went to church on a Wednesday night. I answered the altar call. I got so gloriously saved. I was never the same again, never took another drink. He said, but the next service I went, I went back to the altar and a deacon met me and said, what you come for this time? The Holy Ghost? And I said, what's that? And he said, it's what's next. And he said, is it better than what I got last time? And the deacon said, no, but it'll make what you got last time a whole lot better. That's my whole hour and a half message in about three sentences. He makes Jesus better. He makes salvation better. Joshua, don't go too far. I want to pray for you after a while. Hallelujah. Listen, he said, I begin to seek that night for the Holy Ghost. He said, I saw every night for six months, a, t a brush arbor broke out in South Texas and Alice, Texas. A brush arbor is where they couldn't even afford a tent. So they put up chip chicken wire and put leaves on top and hang a light bulb and have church. And he said, we went every night for six months. He said, I was in the altar every night with my wife for six months. God, feel me. God, feel me. God, feel me. He said, finally, I got so, so desperate I started fasting he said I was a brand new Christian but I was frustrated I said on the third day of that fast I was on a tractor out in the field he said I got to yelling at God till the cows ran off scared he said I said God you filled everybody else why won't you feel me he said if I ever heard the voice of God I was a brand new believer but I heard his voice clear he said Bert I've tried a thousand times and you won't let me what? God, what do you mean I won't let you? I've been seeking you. What do you mean I won't let you? He said, the voice of God came again and said, listen, listen, listen. He said, the voice of God came and said, I put an utterance in your mouth the first time you asked and you refused to speak it. He said, I made up my mind right then. If it hair lipped the governor of Texas, I was going to speak in tongues that night when I got on the altar. He said, I went to the altar. He said, the preacher laid hands on me and my wife at the same time. He said, and I let what was already in there come out. He said, and when I did, it came out like a river. He said, I shot up, threw my hand in the air. It went through the chicken wire and got stuck. He said, but I just kept on rejoicing and shouting and speaking in tongues. Friend, we got a lot better facility here tonight than chicken wire and leaves. But we got the same Holy Ghost. And you don't have to wait six months. You don't have to wait two more minutes. You can come right now. Hallelujah. Brother Robert, I sure wish revival could go on. It can. You know how? Get filled with the spirit of revival right now. You know what's wrong with the church? They complain I'm cold. They complain I don't have what I need. They complain I don't have the light to see my way forward. God said I gave everything you need in the oil. Turn on the light of the Holy Ghost. Turn on the flame of the Holy Ghost. Stop complaining about your lack and use what I already gave you. Everything you need is in this Holy Ghost. You're here. You did not lift your hands earlier because you've not yet received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the Bible evidence of speaking in other tongues and you want to be filled and you believe God to fill you tonight. Come and stand right up here right now. Come, 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 come. Hallelujah. Come stand. Hallelujah. Come. Come to the very front. Come all the way up to the front. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't make me call y'all one by one. Hey, listen, young people, don't stand next to each other because I don't want you to worry about what the other person sounds like. Amen. Spread out a little bit. Spread out a little bit. Spread out a little bit. Glory to God. Don't come if you're going to keep your mouth shut. Don't come if you're going to pray like a church mouse. Get ready to open your mouth. 
Hallelujah. Altar workers, would you begin to come around front and come and stand on these steps? Amen. People that know how to pray, come. If you're full of the Holy Ghost, I want you to come and stand on these steps. If you're, if you're willing to help us pray for these that are here, come and stand on these steps. Altar workers, come around front. I need about 30 of you to come and stand on these steps. Board members, board members, wives, staff members. And all those, first the board members and also those that attend Friday night prayer. I repeat, Friday night prayer. I want you to come, please. All of those who regularly attend Friday night prayer. Hallelujah. <clears throat> now, I'm confused. All of you in this altar have never been filled. I want those who have never been filled to lift a hand high. All right. If you're coming for a refill, I just want you to take a, a little step back because we're going to pray for you too in a second. Everybody else, you might be up here to be an altar worker. Press in around these that have lifted their hands. <laughs> Oh, the devil's so scared. Hallelujah. We got to work something up. No, you don't have to work anything up. Listen, listen. This is not an emotion. You, you're going to feel something at some point in your walk with the Holy Ghost, but you don't have to feel anything for you to begin to speak. It's the will of heaven for you to speak tonight. I want you to lift both hands all over this room. All over this room, lift your hands. All over the altar, lift your hands. Lift your hands. I want us out loud to say, Jesus, wash me in your blood. I believe your blood has made me clean. Forgive me of my sin. Every sin. Take every guilt, every shame, every condemnation. I believe I am your child. This promise is for your children in Jesus name now listen 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 I want you to just take a second and tell the Lord thank you for saving me because the devil still tries to tell some of you you're not saved so just tell the Lord thank you for saving me thank you for saving me I am saved I am a child of God thank you Lord I'm not going to hell I belong to Jesus I'm saved and I know that I am glory 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 now every lying devil that says you're not a candidate, I rebuke in the name of Jesus. You have to go. We are the children of God. We are heirs and joint heirs. And this promise is for us. Altar workers, get ready, but not yet. We're going to take just 30 seconds and you're going to open your mouth. I love you. Look at me. I love you. I don't want you to go home empty. If you've been washed in the blood, you're ready for heaven. But friend, we're not in heaven yet. We got to go live in a dark world. He died to give you power. Michael, you got to open your mouth and use your voice. If you got gum in your mouth, spit it out or swallow it. Joey, you got to use your voice. That makes me uncomfortable that you say that. I'm sorry, but he can't fill you. You can't pour, listen, you can't pour anything in a container that has a lid on it. You're going to open your mouth and take the lid off. You're going to begin to worship him. And what happened in Acts 2 in the upper room is going to happen right here. Oh, hallelujah. 30 seconds. We're going to worship out loud. You hear me, young people? Out loud. Worship, worship. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
been filled. If you feel like God filled you already in this altar, you begin to speak what God gave you. You spoke in tongues for the first time, but more than tongues, you received an infilling of power. For the first time in your life, you received the Holy Ghost. If that's you, put up one hand right now. Put up one hand. Put up one hand. You got filled with the Holy Ghost tonight. Hallelujah. Lift it up. 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 Amen. Amen. We're not done. We're not done. I say that to say this. I wanted them to lift their hands so that you can see. Well, if God filled them, he must still be filling people in these last days. And if he filled them, I'm not better than them. I'm not worse than them. I had sin like them. I got washed in the blood like them. God will fill me too. How many still believe God's going to fill you tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody put your hands down. Now, I need to know. You're here, you've not yet received the Holy Ghost, you've not yet begun to speak in tongues, and you want to be filled. Put up one hand right now. Put it up, put it up, put it up. Lift it up high, lift it up high, lift it up high. Those of you that just got filled, Michael, Sarah, buddy right here, those of you in these altars that just got filled, you see somebody next to you with their hand up, God filled you to pour into them. We're going to continue to pray, but I need another 20 altar workers. So you are the altar workers. Find the person next to you. Let the Spirit of God begin to pray through you. Don't go back to English. Come on. You want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Lift your hand. You want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Lift your hand. Lift it up. Lift it up. Lift it up. Now lay hands on them. Lay hands on them. Lay hands on them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Right now.
some room right in here. Joshua, did God fill you with the Holy Ghost tonight? Oh, yes, he did. He's speaking in tongues like he's been filled for 30 years. He's speaking in tongues like a preacher. Hallelujah. Michael, God filled you. Praise God. Praise God. Sarah, God filled you. Praise the Lord. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. Man of God praying next to me in the prayer room every night. God filled you with the Holy Ghost, didn't he? Where are you from, brother? Ghana. Take me with you. I want to go. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. All right. I just need um, board members, deacons, and, and their spouses, and then the staff and their spouses to come. Hallelujah. Right up in this area. And I want you to make two lines for me. We're going to make a prayer, a prayer tunnel. So make two lines. Hallelujah. 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 Wonderful. Amen. So some of y'all, two lines. Some of y'all take a step back. Take a step, a few more steps back. A few more steps back. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then the other ones face them. So I need a line facing this way and a line facing this way. Yep, yep. Holy Ghost car wash, prayer tunnel. I don't know what y'all fire tunnel. I don't know what you call it in Canada. I'm having a hard time communicating what I mean. I got so much ice on that rental vehicle. I took it through the car wash not to get it clean, just hoping the hot water would melt the ice off of it because I was too lazy to pick it off with my bare hands. I got Florida fingers. I'm not made for that. Some of you, you need some, some of the things you've been through to wash off of you. And you lifted your hand. You said, I need a refill. You're going to begin to queue up right here. Joshua, you're the first. Man of God, thank you. Just make a line behind Joshua. You want to get filled or you want to refill? Just start a line. Amen. If you, you don't want to stand in line a long time, you can sit out there and worship and sing along with bro Brother Josh. And, and then when the line goes down, you can, you can come up. I would say, you know, we got probably too many people to go through the line twice. I felt led to do this last night or that, that, I, that you know, that we should do it before the revival ends. Now look at me. Y'all can begin to come around. Because they're going to come through that way. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Fire, fall down. Fire, fall down. On us we pray. As we seek you, Lord. slain let somebody drag you over to the side but be prepared to get the greatest refill of the holy ghost listen 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 we are commissioning you out into a dark world to be the lamp of god some of you mamas need the holy ghost to be the best mama you can be some of you men need the holy ghost to be the best husband the best worker the best light you need the holy ghost to stand for righteousness you need
when we pray we believe things shift when we pray this moment is more powerful than ballot boxes and elections hallelujah Lord we want more than tongues you said through John the Baptist that Jesus would baptize with the Holy Ghost and with fire a baptism of fire in this house right now. Let it burn. Let it burn. Let it burn. Come on, release the Holy Ghost in you right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in 
Jesus' name. I can't count how many were filled with the Holy Ghost tonight, but there was a bunch. And some even got saved tonight. I know at least of two. <laughs> Don't let them tell you that this thing scares people away. Often when I preach on the Holy Ghost, people come to Jesus and get saved. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. Don't let the fire go out, Sarah. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. Some of y'all, some of y'all still have that nice Canadian Holy Ghost. I pray you get a little bit of an aggressive Holy Ghost too. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, there's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. Hallelujah. <laughs> I don't think you know this southern gospel song but I want to say thank you for your giving thank you for the meals I feel my buttons struggling and me struggling not to push against them but um, thank you for everything I pray and look forward to when the Lord will open the door again for us to be together but, but greater than that greater than that I pray to hear reports of of moves of God not contingent on any special minister, just God moving. Testimony service and, 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 and young people taking the mic and getting an anointed and, and grandmas getting anointed and grandpas getting anointed and children getting anointed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's an old song that says, Thanks, thanks. I give you thanks for all you've done. I am so blessed, my soul has found rest. Oh Lord, I give you thanks. We don't want to be like the lepers that didn't return thanks. We want to say thanks. Give you thanks for all you done. I am so I'm so blessed. My soul has found rest. Oh, Lord, I give you thanks. I give you thanks for the strength you give. Sister Helen, he's always right beside me. He hears me every time I pray. And since I first began, you've been my dearest friend. That's why I give you all the praise. Oh, thanks. I give you thanks. I give you thanks for Continuously, he's off again. 
preaching uh, in Alberta this week coming. And we want to just release him, so to speak. Uh, he's not a, our staff evangelist. It'd be nice if he was, but he's not. But he certainly feels like he is. And uh, we want to just pray for him as the Lord leads him and just will use him powerfully that God will just continue to anoint this this vessel. I, I call him a voice. I, I really believe he's a voice to the nations. And so we want to pray that his voice, God's voice, will be echoed through him as he travels all over the world. Let's just pray together. Can we do that? Father, we've been blessed this entire week because you have spoken your voice has been spoken through him and father you have as a young child called him seven eight years old lord it's hard to imagine at that, that age that someone can truly experience your power in their lives and yet we know that he has you've called him while he was in his mother's womb you chose him you anointed him like Jeremiah and spoke through him and are speaking through him like fire, Lord, that comes out of his mouth, fire. You said to Jeremiah, I will give you the words to speak. You have given him the words to speak. He's become a voice, not only here, but throughout the land. And I pray you will increase that voice, Lord, as he travels throughout this world. That, Lord, as he speaks, it will be like the word of God would be like a hammer that breaketh the walk into pieces. That he will be like that hammer. Your word will be spoken through him. Lord, that there will be signs and wonders following the preaching of the word. I pray, Lord, that you will increase the anointing. That he will see in his eyes things he's never seen before. Lord, that the Bible he preaches from will become alive. And Lord, as he preaches from the book of Acts, Lord, he will see signs and wonders directly from the book that he has read. We will see it manifest before his eyes. And Lord, I pray that as he travels, Lord, to Alberta, he'll begin to see these things that we are praying for. I pray for a major increase in his life. Lord, that the waters will continue to rise within him. Lord, as he continues, Lord, open those doors everywhere, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for this man. We thank you for him, Lord. And Lord, pray you'd meet every need in his life. Lord, I know it's not easy to travel from place to place, from country to country. And I pray, Lord, that you would be there by his side. Lord, as he comes home at night, wherever home might be, a hotel room, a, a friend's house. Lord, I know that it's, it's not easy and it's difficult at times to pour out your soul and, and come home. And Father, I pray that you would just touch this man. Father, in every way. We want to say thanks, Lord, for what you're doing through him. We want to say thanks for what you're going to do through him. As he has said he wants to hear the reports of what will happen here. Equally, Father, we want to hear the reports of what you're doing through him over there. And so, Father, Ikarabashiki, we place him into your hands tonight. The oil that he spoke on tonight, may that oil continue to flow through him. May it flow down Aaron's spirit into his heart, even now, Lord. May he be rich in his life. I thank you for him. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. Give praise tonight.
ago that we'll be here all week every night staying till 10 30 and past that for some of us and you don't want to go home I can tell none of you want to go home 
I can tell you you want to hear some more. Josh, I don't know. You got a couple more in your fingers there. You got a couple. We're going to play two more, and we're going to see you back on Sunday. And I'll tell you something. Get ready, because something powerful is going to happen on Sunday. Hallelujah to the Lord.